Hi everyone, today I want to show you an interesting case. This is a cancer patient currently undergoing chemotherapy. She presented with poor vision and extremely narrow angles. Her anterior chamber depth is only 1.62 millimeters. Her options were LPI with subsequent cataract surgery or straight to cataract surgery. She had minimal platelets due to her chemotherapy and was a little bit concerned about the bleeding risk with LPI. Understandably, she was also yearning for something positive in her life, such as improved vision. So she elected to have cataract surgery in hopes of a better quality of life. Notice here how I have to inject viscoelastic by the incision so that I can just fit my cannula in there. I expected to go in there and deepen the anterior chamber with viscoelastic and remove the cataract. But look how the viscoelastic comes right back out of the paracentesis. There was so much posterior pressure that the AC would very quickly flatten. On top of that, you will soon see how weak her zonules are. Here I'm creating an incision. and I want to make sure I create a very good square incision. Normally with weak zonules, you can push the lens back complex posteriorly. But in this case, the posterior pressure was so significant that it was impossible. We did place her in reverse Trendelenburg position, but throughout the case, I considered giving IV mannitol, diamox, and even performing a limited parse plane of vitrectomy. I was prepared to do so, but decided to inch along slowly and decide that I would reserve those options if I'm unable to progress safely. So here you can see all the capsular folds as I'm trying to pierce the capsule with my forceps. And now the AC has flattened. I don't even have enough space for the MST forceps the height of which is about a millimeter, and I don't want to bump into the corneal endothelium. So I perform part of the capsulorexis, as you see again, all these capsular folds from weak zonules, and then every time it gets too flat, I'll reinflate the anterior chamber with viscoelastic. Each time I go in with my forceps, I make sure that I'm not going to bump the corneal endothelium. And here I turn the forceps sideways to give it a slimmer profile, because the height of the forcep head is about a millimeter. Another way to approach this is to use a cystotome and perform the capsulorexis through a paracentesis. I chose to continue using forceps as things were progressing well. The key here is to take your time, don't be in a rush, keep inserting viscoelastic as you need. Notice here how the whole capsular bag prolapses to the temporal incision. This is due to weak zonules and high posterior pressure. If the zonules were weak and the posterior pressure was normal or low, you can just push the whole capsule lens complex posteriorly. Here is the hydrodissection. Cases are so much easier when you have a very good hydrodissection. As I spin this cataract, it wants to prolapse into the anterior chamber, but there's no space for it without bumping the cornea, so I tap it back. I then reinflate the anterior chamber with viscoelastic to create space for my phaco needle, and I really can't wait for this part. I just want to remove a whole millimeter of cataract material to give myself two millimeters of space to work with. But before I use any phaco energy, I want to aspirate to make sure there's flow so I don't get a wound burn. Remember, there's so much viscoelastic I keep putting in here. And then here I go shaving off a millimeter of cataract material. I'm not creating a groove. I'm just creating space. After that, I'm going to create a groove, but the groove should not be too deep because remember, I already shaved away some of the cataract material. And because the zonules are very weak, I'm being very diligent and watching out for either vitreous prolapse through zonules, and I'm also being very careful not to exert too much pressure on the cataract either laterally or posteriorly. That's another reason why a good hydrodissection is so helpful because you disassociate, you decouple the cataract from the capsular bag. But even still, you want to make sure that you don't apply pressure shifting the position of the cataract capsule complex. Here you need to emulsify each lens fragment in the capsular bag. There's no space to come anteriorly and so you need to protect the endothelium of the cornea as well as the posterior capsule which will want to prolapse forward given the weak zonules and high posterior pressure. Here you see me proactively using my second instrument to guard the corneal endothelium. The other lens pieces are holding the posterior capsule back. Because there is such little space, I'm barely using any phaco power. I'm mostly aspirating. Because if I can get this lens material into my phaco needle without emulsification, 
I would prefer to do that. And it's important to keep inflating the anterior chamber with viscoelastic, not because the cataract is dense, it's not, but it's to protect the corneal endothelium, create space, and also push the posterior capsule back. And here is the final nuclear fragment. We need to ensure that we hold the posterior capsule back as we emulsify this last fragment. And I'm trying not to use phaco energy if I can avoid it. I'm trying to first see if it would just aspirate. And if it won't, I'll tap into the phaco energy. And now that I got the nuclear material out, I can remove the rest with the IA tip. Even in more challenging cases, you have to count your blessings. One thing I got to say is this patient is a rock star in terms of her cooperation. I guess she's been through so much. She's been through chemo and all these treatments for her cancer. So this is nothing for her. So I'm very fortunate to have a cooperative patient. Here I'm removing the epinucleus with the IA tip. And then I'm going to remove the cortex and I'm watching the edge of the capsular rexus carefully, making sure that I'm not grabbing capsule. So that's the way you need to approach a weak zonule case when you're removing cortex. Watch that capsular rexus edge. Make sure you're not shifting the whole capsule. You're not pulling the whole capsule. And pull that cortex ta tangentially. And if you can, try not to grab a large piece of cortex because then you have more purchase on the capsule as well. So try to take thin strips of cortex if you can. And of course, we plan on putting a capsular tension ring in this eye, but with capsular tension rings, you wanna put it as early as necessary, but as late as possible. So I'm trying to remove all this cortex as much as possible prior to putting the capsule tension ring. And so far, I'm inching along and things are going well. So I'm gonna remove the cortex prior to putting the capsule tension ring. Now that there's no more cortex as a structural backbone of the capsule, before coming out, you want to make sure you inject viscoelastic because if you don't and there's a gap in the zonules, vitreous can prolapse. And you'll see here that the cohesive viscoelastic just comes right back out of the eye. Even though the cohesive is heavier and it has more weight to it, it sticks together. And so when some of it comes out, all of it tends to come out. Here, I'm gonna try to put some through the paracentesis and hopefully it doesn't wanna come out. But again, <laughs> it just comes right out with that posterior pressure. So <laughs> in this case, I'm okay with using the dispersive and I'll just take more time evacuating it um, after I put in the lens. Here I'm putting the CTR. I normally have a Sinsky hook in my left hand to help guide the CTR in the bag, but in this case I choose to use viscoelastic in my left hand to maintain, maintain the anterior chamber and expand the capsular bag as necessary. Unfortunately, the capsule tension ring goes in well. This is not a case you wanna spend much time polishing because the anterior and posterior capsule are almost stuck together. There's not enough space and you can inadvertently tear the capsule. We just need to make space to put in this lens implant safely in the bag. That's the priority. This is a BNL Aspire monofocal lens. I really like this lens. I even like it more than the iHance lens so far. I'm gonna insert it into the capsular bag and then I notice at around three o'clock, you'll see a tiny wisp of cortex. So I'm gonna actually rotate this lens to try to use the IOL haptic to loosen or dislodge this cortical material. That's the only reason why I'm spinning this lens. Otherwise, you don't really need to. And remember, there is a CTR in there, so it may be holding it into the fornix of the capsular bag. I'm gonna hydrate the incision prior to evacuating the viscoelastic because I'm expecting this anterior chamber to flatten immediately once the viscoelastic is gone. And remember, this is mostly dispersive viscoelastic, so I'm gonna take my time removing it. It's not gonna come out as quickly as cohesive viscoelastic. There is no space for me to put my IA tip behind this lens implant. So I'm gonna use some tilting and rocking of the IOL to evacuate all the viscoelastic. And as I perform my victory laps, removing the viscoelastic, I'm gonna flirt with this piece of cortex 
and see if I can aspirate it. But I'm not going to chase it aggressively. A teeny strip of cortex behind a CTR is not visually significant, and it's most important that this case is finished safely. Now, as I remove viscoelastic, I'll rotate the lens a little bit, and if that piece of cortex decides to want to come out more easily, then great, that's what I'll do. But if not, it's not a big deal. Don't chase it so aggressively. And here, I'll go back to this area to see if it'll come out. And yep, I just got a piece of it, so that's great. So in this case, we turn off irrigation prior to coming out. We could have used the paracentesis injecting BSS while coming out, but there's so much posterior pressure, I knew it would not be able to maintain the anterior chamber. Sealing this temporal incision by hydrating the sides and roof of the incision is a priority. The pressure is rock solid, so we have to decrease the pressure via the paracentesis, but I know the temporal incision is watertight. So now I'm just going to center the lens. With all these advanced monofocals, you really have to center it properly. Otherwise, you lose the benefit of any extended depth of focus. So the IOL is centered. The temporal incision is watertight, and I'm just making sure with the wax cell. So now there's just the paracentesis to double check. I want to make sure there's no leak there. But in this case, there is a leak. I'll show it to you now. Watch the drop of fluid come out of the paracentesis. You saw that? So I'm going to hydrate the paracentesis a little bit more, make sure it's watertight, and make sure the IOP or the eye pressure is appropriate. And there you go. Now it's watertight. I'm just going to make sure the eye pressure is good. I don't want it too high or too low. So I'm just going to lower it a little bit to the normal range. And there, it's perfect. So here's the patient one day after surgery. Despite the very shallow anterior chamber and the very tight space to work in, we don't have any significant corneal edema. And this is due to the technique we applied of just being patient, frequent use of viscoelastic, not being in a rush, not using too much phaco energy. And this patient is already 2020 on day one without glasses. She is thrilled. She is so happy. And I'm very happy for her. She can't wait for her other eye to be done. I'm going to show you her other eye also in this video. Here it is. You can see how shallow the anterior chamber is, although the eye we just did was even worse. I plan to take the same approach with her second eye, although in pre-op I'm going to give her some Dymox to help try to reduce that posterior pressure. And I'll position her in reverse Trendelenburg again. If I ever get to a point where I feel I cannot safely progress during surgery, I will consider performing a limited vitrectomy from the pars plana to decrease that pressure. And I thank you so much for your attention. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.